I want to walk through the test uh, structure with you and give you some of the technical information behind it so you uh, have an understanding of how the test is uh, constructed and what you have to do on it to you know, increase your chances of passing. And the URL I'm visiting is this one right up here. I typically get there by just typing in Rika space NES Inc. into Google and then eventually I can get to this page. Once you get there, it's probably important to bookmark it so you don't have to you know, fumble around looking for things. So I'm going to talk about the content specifications briefly, the structure of the test. We've uh, already been working or will be working on the written examination. This is where I got it from. Bibliography is uh, useful, that's for sure. You might want to review some of the books that are on there. And then there is more information about how to interpret your results. All you want to interpret is the letter P, right, where you passed. That's what you want. And I think... Uh, you know, reviewing the structure of a computer-based test would also be very helpful. But uh, anyway, I've downloaded the content specifications, and that's the first link that's on the site. If you're wondering what that link will bring you to, this is what it's going to show you. And spending your time studying in each of these areas would be very useful. You can see that there are five domains on this test. They don't all count or value the same, so be sure that you're aware of that. But one is going to be on planning and organizing and managing reading instruction. The other is on word analysis. That's going to be phonemic awareness, concepts about print, uh, phonics, and syllabication, things like that. Then the, they've broken out domain three, fluency, to stand by itself. And then they have vocabulary, academic language, and background knowledge all packed into one. And they have comprehension, test questions on comprehension. Something that doesn't look like it's on here, but it is present, is the, having to understand how to differentiate instructions for uh, learners who are gifted, uh, learners who are struggling, and, um, and English learners, too. That's woven throughout the test and present in the essays. If I just scroll down uh, a little bit so you can see this, notice that like on a domain like domain one, you can see where they have planning and organizing and managing reading instruction along with the competencies. And each of these domains has a different number of competencies. But you've got to look someplace else to figure that out. But let's just look at this and, and see what it's telling. I'm not going to read the whole thing to you, but spending some time going through the technical information is good because it talks about and provides you with some of the vocabulary that you might need to know and even alludes to some activities that will be helpful. So if I just sort of scroll through Domain 1 and Competency 1, you see that it's got like sub-competencies uh, that number up to, it looks like, number 8. There's a second competency, and we're still in Domain 1 on planning, and you can see what the competency is stating and then telling you what it's going to test you on. Spending time reading over that information and aligning materials that perhaps are in the bibliography that they give you uh, would be helpful. Uh, but let me scroll through to uh, Domain 2, which is Word Analysis, and notice that they've got a number of competencies uh, in here, too. It's about a third of the test is coming from Word Analysis. They really want to make sure that students understand how to do early literacy, and that's probably why, or it's exactly why, it's a, a third of your, uh, of your testing experience. But you've got Competency 3 and a whole lot of descriptors in there, and Competency 4. This is all about concepts about print, for example. That's what Competency 4 is. Competency 5 is, are things related to phonics and sight word instruction. Competency 1 was phonemic awareness. Pardon me. Competency 3 was phonemic awareness, if I didn't mention it. And Competency 5, as I said, um, has sight words and phonics together. Competency 6 is about, looks like automatic word recognition, kind of says so right here. So really, reading over all of these uh, descriptors is incredibly helpful. If you don't have any idea what a VCCVC is, you probably want to learn what that is, right? Vowel consonant, consonant, vowel consonant, along with segmenting, sounding out, and blending, for example. So spend some time in here so you can get an uh, idea of what's going on. Even uh, some of the terminology like inflex, inflections, I give you inflections that you can study and I talk about those things on the content lectures and in the multiple choice review. Uh, but start, you know, get cracking. If there's language on here that you don't know, simple Google search will probably help you uh, with that. They also have uh, competency seven, which looks like it's about s be being able to syllabicate, structurally analyze and look at words, for example. And if we go to the next uh, domain, that doesn't count for very much. 
perhaps not directly, but um, well, it is direct in the essays and in the multiple choice questions, but also perhaps indirectly in the case study. But I'll talk about that in a little bit. You can see that it's got its number of competencies. It looks like it's got competency eight, the role of fluency, and competency nine, uh, how to promote it. All of this, again, all of the descriptors that you see that I'm just skipping over are ones that you really need to read. It'd take too much time for me to do this, and I really already did it when I covered the reading instruction model in a separate series of lectures that takes about three or four hours to get through, I think. Domain four is on vocabulary and uh, academic language. You can see, again, con uh, the content areas that are here, or the competencies that are there, rather. And let me go to the last one, which is on comprehension. And comprehension uh, has, again, its own set of competencies, too, and descriptors. Do spend some time on that, because they do allude to activities. Like if I were to show you one, it says, for example, if you look at uh, how they describe inferential comprehension, main ideas, comparisons, cause and effect, uh, relationships, etc., you can get a sense of their understanding of the definitions of these words. Making um, like flashcards is helpful. You can do that certainly on paper if you want, or there are flashcard, I guess, apps that are out there that you could, could do. Perhaps that'd be uh, be helpful. And you can, the level of description that you see, as I'm highlighting in here, is, is quite, is quite um, dense, as you can see. Uh, so taking the time to read through all of this information is going to do nothing but benefit you on the uh, on the test. And you can see that there's a lot to a lot to learn, and I won't be reading all of it uh, to you. So. They throw all of this information at you, and it's a bit hard to maybe ferret out exactly what it is that you're going to be tested on and, uh, and how. I mean, they do give you the information, but what is the structure of the test like? And you have to go to a different uh, place to get that information. Same site, of course, just a different place. And let me show you what I mean by a different place. I'm looking here at the test structure and that's on a different uh, link where they have test structure so downloading it and reviewing it would be very helpful I was just looking over the content specifications so the way that the test is organized is presented on a uh, different uh, page it looks like back out of this so it's in the window just a little bit better if possible and let's start by looking maybe right well let's not do anything yet I'm sorry, I'm trying not to make this first draft theater, I, I promise, but, you know, getting everything to line up in the window is hard sometimes. So, anyway, here are the five domains that you see uh, listed for us. They tell you the number of competencies uh, that you have to account for. You can see that in uh, word analysis, uh, there are five. A lot of things to read. Comprehension, there are four. And that's because these weight more on the test, and I'm going to show you how that, uh, how that is. If you look at domain one, for example, the number of multiple choice questions and its weight on the test uh, vary. It constitutes 10% of the test, only 10 multiple choice items, and if I extend this window out a little more, this red line, there are no essays on that subject, no single essays. You can look way over here in the case study, which I'll deal with separately. It's indirectly tested on that, but directly tested on only 10 multiple choice questions. If we look at word analysis, that's a full third of your exam. That's quite a bit. And the number of multiple choice questions is 24. And in the, uh, the essay portion, for example, as you see right here, we're looking at you know, a 150-word essay. The fluency question, only two competencies, only 13% of the test, eight multiple choice questions. It has its own essay. But I want you to notice immediately that there are different uh, word counts for the, the essay questions. Let me see if I can't just get this in the window a little better now because this is where things get a little bit more important uh, when we're talking about the, the essays especially. The domain four, for example, is on vocabulary, academic language, and word knowledge. 20% of the test, the, the points for the test comes uh, from this domain. You'll see 15 multiple choice, but look again, look at the essays. 75 uh, to 125 words. Not as much as word analysis and not as much as comprehension. Comprehension comes in 
you know, close, uh, comes in second to word analysis, but it's quite important. 23% of the test is coming from that, 13 multiple choice questions. But look at the essay, uh, word counts, 150 to 300 words and 150 to 300 words here. So trying to figure out, you know, where do I spend my time on this thing? Well, look way over here at the case study. The case study is 300 and 600 words. It is going to contribute quite a bit uh, toward your score. So nailing the case study is really important, as you can see. Um, one suggestion that I always have for students, and again, I only suggest, and that is to uh, outline the case study first if they let you uh, do that, you know, through, uh, you know, tagging or tabbing or something like that, and then doing the multiple choice and trying to nail at least you know, 80% of the uh, of the items, and then going back and doing the case study. Something that seems to work for, for people is to just get familiar with the test for about, you know, five, ten minutes, and whipping out an outline for the case study, outlining the constructed responses, doing the multiple choice, and then going back and filling in your outlines, or writing the response if you know it immediately, why waste time? That does uh, seem to work for some people. Uh, one thing that is a little funny, it's not funny at all, it's your money. One thing that's a little dastardly is they tell you you're going to be, you know, doing 70 multiple choice questions and do them you will. But I wanted to point something out to you here that you might not have, uh, have known unless you know where to look. And this is in the explanation of the, the score report. And one thing that a lot of, uh, of students are not uh, aware of uh, is this that not all of the multiple choice questions count look 10 multiple choice questions are field questions that do not count toward your score and I'm not a real fan of that I have to tell you I wish that they just would be straight and not play games and use test takers as guinea pigs but but they but they do and that means that only 60 multiple choice questions count. You don't know which or which. You're going to be doing questions that aren't going, going to count your, toward your score. And that's why it's really important to go through these, you know, through the test, get the questions that you know and are sure on uh, so that you're not wasting time on this, on this test. That's probably the worst thing that you can do. Another thing that's not clear is, you know, what order the essays are, are um, presented in. And so if you look here, for domain three, that's the first essay that you see. That is um, uh, assignment A, is what they is what they call it. So, when you're doing a, the first essay, just remember you're not going to be getting very many points for that. Uh, also, the second one is this one right here. The two cheap uh, questions that don't count much toward your score, they give you first. And if you look at the next question that's given, it's the word analysis question. That's C, it counts more. And then the one that counts uh, uh, about the same as uh, word analysis is the comprehension essay, 150 words to, to, to 300 words. And then the case study, that's the one that counts the most. So again, this is a bit of a game, kind of a, a it's more of like casino than a, than a test in my opinion, because they give you the case study that counts the most last, and then they give you the two questions that count the least first. So people burn out on this test all the time. It's four hours long. Uh, so really learning how to do this test efficiently, I think, is uh, half the battle or half the battle. I don't have any idea what the percentage is, but it just makes more sense to do something like outline these essays first, do the multiple choice, do as many of the gimmies as you can, get through those, and then go back in and fill in your essays, and then guess on the questions. There's, there will be multiple choice questions that you're not going to get because maybe you're not supposed to get them. You know, there are 70 questions there, 60 of them count, 10 are you know, for nothing. So be a little strategic in how you approach the, uh, the test. It's my suggestion anyway. Um, last thing I'll say is going and looking at the bibliography and some of the other information in here uh, is to your advantage. You don't want to go into this test without some kind of a plan. You don't want to go into it blindly. You don't want to learn on the, uh, on the job, so to speak. You want to make sure that you know what you're doing going into it. And doing the practice test and reviewing the structure of the test, that's all to your advantage. So enough with the technical information. Hopefully uh, you found it helpful. If not a little bit eye-opening, uh, hopefully not too depressing.